What's going on YouTube? Grid Square here and today I want to give you guys my quick review of the Peak Design Travel Tripod. So a three part disclaimer here. Firstly, I'm not affiliated with Peak Design in any way, shape or form, sponsored by them. Although I'd love to change that. So uh, Peak Design, sponsor me please. Uh, second, I'm a Peak Design fanboy. Uh, I love everything they've made, every product I bought of theirs. I have enjoyed it and been, every dollar spent with them has been well worth it on my end. However, that being said, I still have no bias when it comes to products. If they come out with some bullshit, I will call it like I see it. Third part, I am not a professional photographer, all right? I am a hobbyist at best, meaning that I don't make any money off of doing my pictures and photography and video stuff. I just like doing it. And I'm a bit of an enthusiast. And what I mean by that is I will sink a good amount of my income into this hobby because I like having the higher end of stuff, all right? I don't mind spending the money on good products that I think are gonna last me and I'll enjoy for years, even though I'm probably not gonna ever get a return or pay for these items back through doing my hobby. All right, so with my reviews, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the bullshit first, the bad stuff, because likely, this is not a new product. You guys have most likely seen Peter McGinnon, Jason Vong, or many of the other guys sponsoring these things. You've probably seen their stuff. So I'm not gonna bore you with stats, okay? You're not stupid. You probably already know the differences between the aluminum and the carbon fiber version of this. So I'm not gonna treat you like you're dumb. That being said, there are a few little things that I feel are kind of stupid with this. So I have three main issues with this tripod. My three critiques and negative things that I'm not a fan of. Firstly, price. All right, $350 for the aluminum one, cool. $600 for the carbon fiber, all right? I've got the money to spend on it and I still won't drop 600 freaking dollars on a tripod that's carbon fiber based and not aluminum because it saves me a pound of weight and has a little bit more shock absorption, which I haven't seen any actual proof of in hard data. Now, a friend of mine in South Seattle was doing a uh, photo shoot for a sort of a wedding party bachelor thing in a public park not too long ago. And I know he's got one of these, I've seen it on his Instagram page, and I asked him if he would mind if I came up and looked at it and poked around with it a little bit. Now, he wouldn't let me take any videos or pictures because he didn't want me spoiling his shoot or I guess stealing some of his money. That being said, I saw the, the carbon fiber one I wasn't impressed, okay? One thing that people complain about I see with the carbon fiber is that the legs fully extended have some flimsy give to them, but what do you expect? It's lightweight, it's extending like 50 something inches. There's compromise built into this somewhere, so stop complaining about dumb shit, okay? But that being said, there was nothing about that carbon fiber one that I could really tell the difference between my aluminum one. I, even the one pound weight difference, I. I honestly couldn't tell, all right? Like I maybe have just one pound difference in my hands. I couldn't tell and honestly, mama didn't raise no bitch. So if you're really worried about an extra pound in your pack, that's gonna make or break your photography game, like go to the gym more, I don't know what to tell you. The second issue I have is the little hex key uh, clippy on thingy, all right? Cool idea, all right, Peak Design. This was a, a novel and nifty idea to have a little hex key, you know, slide onto the inside of the leg and snap on there so it's low profile, doesn't stick out far, okay? Cool idea. The downside is it literally just, you guys can see that just, it, it, it comes right off. It literally takes almost no pressure to knock that thing off. I feel like we could have stuck those Allen keys somewhere else, like maybe in a leg. I mean, we got the little, you guys have seen the little cell phone holder doodad inside your, your hook here. Maybe we could have shoved them somewhere else in this thing. I don't know, I'm not an engineer. I just feel like that's a cool idea, poorly executed. Now let me piggyback onto this with the hex keys because I've seen Peter McGinnon's review, I've seen several reviews where they complain that, oh, well, it uses a hex key system and it's not like my, uh, my RC2 mount where I can either use a coin or it's got the little lever thing that you can twist. This is one of those stupid issues that I feel like professional photographers and enthusiasts like myself, like 
If you have the money that you're dropping on $350 and $600 tripods to put in a bag for you to wander around the mountains and take pictures with, can you really not afford going on Amazon and literally buying like a dozen of the same size hex keys for like 10 bucks tops? Okay, Allen wrenches are very cheap and there are a thousand websites where you can buy the exact same sizes that use this tripod and fit it. And like literally, if you're dropping that kind of money on this stuff, I'm sure you have a fancy expensive bag, much like my Pete and Regan and Nomad bag that I'll be reviewing next week. Uh, that thing has tons of pouches for Allen wrenches. So if you're literally that whiny, like, oh, I've got to haul around an Allen wrench. So if I lose the Allen wrench on this thing, then oh me, oh my, I can't adjust the thing. Go buy some Allen wrenches and stop complaining or something so stupid. I mean, really? No, no, really. Stop it. My number one complaint, and even this, this is still sort of a quality of life thing, is the compatibility of the plates. All right, most everybody knows that Peak Design comes with their own little uh, plate shenanigan mount that goes on the bottom of the camera. Now mine's no difference. Mine's no different on my uh, Sony a7 III and I've got my Sigma 1-400 to telephoto mount lens, you know, slides right on, locks in, slide it in. Okay, and that thing's on there pretty, it's it's not coming off, all right? I took this up a, a side of a mountain this last weekend for a hike, I'll be doing it again this Saturday, um, and I had no issues. Now right there, I know some of you screaming, oh my God, Grid, why don't you have a collar for your mount so it's taking the weight up? The okay, Sigma has uh, an issue keeping these LC111 uh, mounts for this new lens in stock, okay? I'm trying to find one in stock, nobody has them, and I'm not paying $300 on eBay for a tripod collar thing. So that's why I'm doing it this way for now. All right, so no issues mounting that uh, small Peak Design plate. The problem I do have is that with most of my other tripods, even the one I'm using now, even my mounts, I use like the Manfrotto uh, was it RC2, that quick release uh, plate? Okay, those things are phenomenal. And honestly, every other photographer I've met uses the exact same system, every single one. Now Peak Design is cool enough that they have made uh, an RC2 compatible plate, which is phenomenal because I also have on my pack, I've got their quick release mount so my camera can hang on my strap so I'm not having to like reach in and out of my bag all the time, okay? And this fits it perfectly, so for this whole time, for all my L uh, RC2 mounts, I've been using this one for my cameras. Okay, and it's worked perfectly, no issues, and it slides right in and out of my quick release mount. Guess what Peak Design product this thing doesn't fit in? That right there. So, once again, is this a deal breaker? No, but it's a pain in my ass, because now I have to take my L, I keep calling it L, I, I keep having to take my RC2 mount off of my cameras while I can put the Peak Design stock little square one on there because that's the only one that fits on this tripod. <sighs> Is it a big deal? No, because once again, if I'm using this tripod, I'm out and about, which means I've got my hiking bag, which means I also have my quick release plate. So the simple, R, it's the simple Peak Design square is going to work just fine because I'm not bringing anything that's using my RC2 plate with me at the time. I just wish, quality of life thing, I could have one plate to rule them all. I feel like we can do this, but once again, not a deal breaker, just me, you know, hoping and dreaming that we could work something like that. So that's it. That is literally the only things I could find to complain about this product, all right? Everything else, uh, this thing is stellar, okay? And I'm not gonna bore you with more, so I'm not gonna do the stats. I'm not gonna show you all the features because most likely you've watched everybody else's videos and you've seen what this thing can do. It's no exaggeration, all right? The only thing I do wanna comment on, when I watch people say like, oh, this thing is really quick and easy to set up and it's click, 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 click. How many takes did it take for them to get that action right and show that to us. Because what's the average fool gonna do bumbling around with it? <sighs> Not the case with this, okay? I took it right out of the box, slid it out, everything was just as I've seen in the YouTube videos. It slid, it did this, it locked in,
turn, twist, move it, lock it. It, it. It's so easy. I mean, there is like, you no need to watch any instruction videos or whatnot. It is just that easy to figure out and it's a pleasure to use. Even like I said, using that telephoto lens, lock it in there with the weight terribly on the front end uh, so it's not distributed evenly. This thing held strong, right? I had no issues with stability. On top of a mountain, I had my lens, uh, my tripod on a boulder, taking pictures of birds and a few ospreys and whatnot. Zero issues with any kind of wobbliness or loose uh, action on that mount and plate. Peak design knocked it out of the park with this. To sum this up, if you've got the money and you would need this, and I say that need, not want, you to justify that kind of $350 for this aluminum thing, you really need to start, I mean, how much traveling or outdoorsy photography do you really do? All right, and I'm not talking about you just pull up in your Subaru and you pull your stuff out of the trunk and then you set up your tripod and go. I'm talking about like, yes, I'm gonna throw everything in my backpack and I'm gonna hike five miles one direction, get there, take photos and hike back. If that's the kind of photography you do, this is worth it, all right? The slim profile fits in your little water bottle slots or your tripod side. It doesn't snag on anything. The weight, like I said, it's like five pounds or something. It's not, it's not heavy at all. Do I recommend this? Five out of five stars, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely. I think this is worth every penny. I believe it was well engineered, well thought out, well made. I don't feel anything cheap. Any plastic piece feels like sturdy. Whatever polymer combination they're using just feels good. It, everything about this feels solid. Aside from those three things that I mentioned first, this is a solid investment. I will definitely call it, it's an investment. Okay, for $350 or $600 for the carbon fiber, I don't feel like you're gonna replace this. If this is gonna be your travel tripod you're gonna have from now, and I fully expect this thing to last 20 years, you know, as long as you're not abusing it. And they're backed by Peak Design's lifetime warranty, so <laughs> what do you have to lose? So pick one of these up. Um, I will note that on Amazon, USA Amazon, uh, you cannot find the aluminum one. For whatever reason, Peak Design is only selling the carbon fiber one on Amazon, and you have to go to Peak Design's actual website to pick this up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. I want to keep it as real as possible because I'm not a paid sponsor, nor do I make money off photography, so this is just people who enjoy doing this hobby. All right, and this is products that I want to talk about, things that like, I think you would enjoy it as I would enjoy it. So if you like this review, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. It helps the channel grow. I'm up to just broke 600 subscribers this week. Small fish in a big ocean, I know, but it's a big deal. Getting bigger. So uh, next week, like I said, I'm going to review the Peter McGinnon travel bag from Nomad. Nomadic. I don't know where it came from, but I needed a travel bag for $400. I finally found the perfect one. So we'll talk about that next week. You guys take it easy. Happy shooting.